The dot product played an important role in our study of the geometry of the real vector space Rn, and it will play a similar role in our study of complex n space. In this video, we'll define the complex dot product, see how it's used to define the magnitude or norm of a vector in complex n space. We'll see some of the properties of the complex dot product, and of course, do a handful of examples. Chapters in the description if you want to skip around the video. If u and v are vectors in complex n space, which remember means that each of its components is itself a complex number, then the complex dot product, also called the complex Euclidean inner product, is denoted u dot v and is defined as follows. The product u dot v is the sum of the products of the components of u with the corresponding components conjugates of v. So it's a little different than the dot product in Rn. Note that we could use this same definition in Rn if we wanted to, since the conjugate of a real number doesn't change it. But in this case, we've got to make sure to take the conjugates of the components of that second vector. Now, why is there a conjugate in the complex dot product? Well, let's think about the Euclidean norm, or magnitude, on complex n space. By defining the complex dot product like this, we're able to define the Euclidean norm on complex n space in the same way that we did in Rn. The magnitude of a vector in Cn is just the square root of the dot product of the vector with itself. Thanks to the conjugates in the complex dot product, this definition for magnitude is going to give us a real number. Let's see why. Because v is a complex vector, each of its components is a complex number. And so when we dot v with itself, that's going to look like this, except you'd have v1 getting multiplied by v1 conjugate, and v2 getting multiplied by v2 conjugate, and so on. So we'd have complex numbers multiplied by their conjugates, and then those would all get added together. So let's look at what happens when we take a complex number, a plus bi, and multiply it by its conjugate, a minus bi. Because of the conjugate relationship, what happens is the middle terms with the i cancel out. And then, of course, minus b squared i squared actually is two negatives, and so we just get plus b squared. And that should look pretty familiar. So when we multiply a complex number by its conjugate, not only do we get a real number, but more specifically, we get the real number that is very closely tied to what we typically consider to be the magnitude of a complex number. If we think of this complex number, a plus bi, as a vector in the complex plane, it would have a horizontal component along the real axis of a, and a vertical component along the imaginary axis of b, and then what's the magnitude of that complex number? Well, of course, it's the square root of a squared plus b squared. So when we multiply it by its own conjugate, we get the square of its magnitude, which is exactly what you see here. The square of v1 magnitude, the square of the magnitude of v2, the square of the magnitude of vn. So thanks to this definition of the dot product, each component, v1, v2, etc., will be getting multiplied by its own conjugate, and we see that looks like this. It's just the square of that complex number's magnitude. And so that's why this magnitude definition works out so well, thanks to this definition of the dot product. So the magnitude of a complex vector is going to be a real number, just as we would like. And with the dot product and magnitude defined, these familiar terms have the same meaning. We would call V a unit vector if it has a magnitude of 1, and we would say that U and V are orthogonal if their dot product is 0. Let's go through some examples now. We're asked to find U dot V, V dot U, magnitude U, and magnitude V. Here's the vector u, it is a complex vector in C3, and of course the vector v is also a complex vector in C3. Notice how each of their components is itself a complex number. All right, I'm going to do the first problem, u dot v, here that is. By definition of the complex dot product, u dot v will be the first component of u times the conjugate of the first component of v plus the second component of u times the conjugate of the second component of v, plus the third component of u, 
times the conjugate of the third component of V. Then we just have to do all this multiplication. 2 times negative I. Negative I times negative I is just negative 1. 2 times I. 4 times 5. 4 times negative 2I. 5 times I. And negative 2I times I. Then combining like terms, we get this answer. 21 minus 3I. And here is V dot U. Now, since U is second, it's the components of U that we're taking the conjugate of. So instead of 2 minus I, we have 2 plus I. Instead of I, we have negative I. Instead of 4 plus I, we have 4 minus I. And of course, on the left, we just have the components of V. Doing all of the multiplication, we get this. And simplifying, we have 21 plus 3i. Importantly, we should notice that the symmetric property that the real dot product has is not shared by the complex dot product. The order here does matter, which we could have anticipated from the definition. When we do u dot v, we're taking the conjugates of the components of v. But when we do v dot u, we're taking conjugates of the components of u. So the order does matter. But you may notice there is still a pretty simple relationship between these things. u dot v doesn't equal v dot u, but we see u dot v does equal v dot u conjugate. The conjugate of this is that. And this is true in general. That's called the anti-symmetry property of the complex dot product. Finally, quickly doing the magnitude calculations. By definition, the magnitude of u is the square root of u dot u. So we'll take those components of u and multiply them by their own conjugates. 2 minus i times 2 plus i. i times negative i. And 4 plus i times 4 minus i. Similarly, for the magnitude of v, it's the square root of v dot v. So we'll take the square root of, and then we're going to take the components of v and multiply them by their conjugates i times negative i, 2 times 2, 5 plus 2i times 5 minus 2i. Now doing all of the multiplication, we get this for u and this for v. Simplify, our final answers are the square root of 23 is the magnitude of u, and the square root of 34 is the magnitude of v. Here are some properties that the complex dot product does have. I'll leave a link in the description to a video where we prove these. We'll just go through them briefly here. As we saw a moment ago, u dot v doesn't equal v dot u, but u dot v does equal the conjugate of v dot u. Again, this is called the anti-symmetry property of the complex dot product. Next, u dot v plus w equals u dot v plus u dot w. So that is our familiar distributive property. The dot product distributes over vector addition. Then we have k times u dot v is the same as k times u dot v. That's the homogeneity property. We also have the anti-homogeneity property. So with the homogeneity property, we saw that we could pair this scalar with the first vector without changing anything. We can also pair the scalar with the second vector, but if we do that and we want to preserve equality, we have to take the conjugate of that scalar. So k times u dot v equals u dot k conjugate times v. And finally, there is the positivity property. The dot product of a complex vector with itself will be at least zero and will equal zero only in the case that the vector equals the zero vector. Of course, v dot v being at least zero is important because v dot v appears under the square root in our definition of the Euclidean norm. One last thing is how we can treat the dot product as matrix multiplication. You may recall in our n that if u and v are column vectors, then we could find their dot product as a matrix product like this, u transpose times v, or v transpose times u. If u and v are column vectors, then they look kind of like that, and we can't multiply them like that. But if this is u and this is v, and then we take u transpose, uh, now u transpose looks like that, and we can match that up with v with matrix multiplication, no problem. Hopefully that makes sense to you. It's a little abstract, but you can write it out if you want to see some more details. It works just the same in the complex n space, with the exception that we need to take the conjugate of v, just of course, because the definition of the complex dot product requires us to take the conjugate of the components of that second vector. Once we turn this dot product into matrix multiplication, 
Obviously, matrix multiplication doesn't require us to take conjugates, so we need to write the conjugate there ourselves. But that's a little bit about the complex dot product, its definition, some reason behind it, its properties, and some examples. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.